Hello, America. What's good, sports fans? I'm feeling great this morning. Got my morning coffee. I I feel good. I'm feeling wonderful. Welcome in, as always. Thanks for checking out the content. Aaron Rodgers played a football game on Monday night. Nothing went as expected or hoped on Monday night for the Jets. Hey, at least we can say Rodgers made it past the first two minutes and survived the entire game. This time last year, it was so hard to see Aaron Rodgers, whose arrival to the Laugh At franchise was one of the most celebrated offseason moves. It, it was it was it was tough to see him go down in, in a heap during Monday Night Football. Last year, he tore his Achilles on the fourth play on the season by former Bills pass rusher Leonard Floyd. The first hit Rodgers took was on a sack by now 49ers pass rusher Leonard Floyd. Rodgers jumped up just fine. He's alive and well. This really wasn't on Rodgers as much as it was on Robert Sala. Now look, no more damn excuses. This at its core is the environment Salas built in this city. There was a time when Robert Sala was this glorified coach. The league successfully brainwashed this country into believing Robert Sala is a great coach. If I'm the Jets, hear me out. If I'm the Jets, I fired Sala immediately. He can turn in the keys, his parking pass, get his belongings, and go on with his life. Nobody ever talks about it, but the man is just 18 and 34 as the Jets head coach over the past three plus seasons. They're one and three in the last 14 primetime games, losers of five straight. I feel like that needs to be talked about more. It's why, in some ways, in a lot of ways, Sala should be on the hot seat. I mean, by now, if we're keeping it real, his ass should be burning. Those who've been around him says he's an upbeat, energetic coach. The more I see of Sala, the more I'm not impressed. Sala is failing so spectacularly in New York that it boggles my mind. This coaching job is made even worse with the reality that the Jets still employ this man. Monday was the kind of game that Sala should be out of a job. It, it's early. 0-1 isn't the end of the world. And yet, this all feels so inevitable for New York. They are locked in a nightmare of their own and and have no way of waking up from it it's one thing to believe in the coach but enough to enable terrible coaching to such an extent the solid ride always falls off the rails it's already looking like a long season sala is on his way out if he doesn't turn it around here's the good news the hardest game on your schedule is out of the way rogers looks healthy and everything is still in front of you but there's no passion no vision no addition I'm serious listen Aaron Rodgers did not die he survived I don't think there's any greater punishment in life than being a Jets fan I'm not overreacting when I say I think it's Salah's last year I can't see him being back next season What makes this loss so much more frustrating for the Jets is that Aaron Rodgers made some spectacular plays as he shook off some rust. If only the defense didn't suck. But I thought in the season opener, Rodgers had a solid performance, but it was ultimately cut short due to an injury. At no point against the San Francisco 49ers did he look like a washed up, old, banged up quarterback. He played well while he was in, showed his experience and skill. His impact on the team was evident. I'll be the first to admit, I thought and I still think Rodgers is done. His best days are behind him. I'm thoroughly impressed by Aaron Rodgers. This was a game in which Rodgers 
looked about as good as you could have realistically hoped in his first game um, in a year coming off an Achilles tear at 40. For now, the Jets fans can be thrilled they're getting a quarterback who dropped multiple dimes. His arm had plenty of zip, easily the most important takeaway. I surely didn't pick the Jets to win anything. I guess I forgot about how good of a quarterback Aaron Rodgers can be when he wants to be. I don't know how sustainable this level of play is either. I think things are quite boom or bust with him. To be clear, the Jets are still the Jets. All Rodgers stuff aside, this loss is entirely on Sala and the defense. They look tired, confused, out-schemed, out, outmatched. We all knew the offense wouldn't be perfect. The defense not coming up with a single stop and being fierce, it, that's, that's crazy. Their 32-19 loss was a, a rude awakening and an eye-opener for Sala. If the Jets don't make the playoffs, I think Sala is done as the head coach. Anything less than a playoff appearance is a fireable offense. I feel like they, sh they shied away from their identity. Defense, complimentary football. Like, how can you betray the very thing that got that got you seven wins last season? Defense. Their defense being a no-show only shows me it's Salah's inability to have his team prepared. Somebody by the name of Jordan Mason ran all over the Jets. He had 28 carries, finished with 147 yards rushing and one touchdown, and he was the backup because Christian McCaffrey couldn't play. The 49ers spoiled Aaron Rodgers' comeback story, the highly publicized comeback, a 32-19 beatdown, easily winning the game without CMC, and Brock Purdy wasn't, wasn't even that efficient. I mean, he wasn't really efficient at all. He, he didn't have his best game. And you have an unheralded Jordan Mason doing his best uh, CMC impression with 147 yards. Everybody screamed about how good the Jets defense was going to be. And they were a no-show. Never showed up. I waited for them all night. They never showed up. Eight straight scoring drives. I'm sorry, but that's not a top 10 defense. That was supposed to be one of the strongest defenses in the NFL. It was the weakest, the softest defense in the league on Monday. They got chewed up. Man, they got chewed up. And Robert Sala is this defensive mind. And yes, the Jets are 0-1 as a result of the team's incompetence lack of discipline, and unpreparedness. And know this, the debate is over exactly when or if Salah is equipped to coach this football team. As, as the season continues, he will be a talking point, though it's on the organization for allowing this man to keep his job. And I, I won't even get started on Nathaniel Hackett who can't call a play, it starts upstairs in the front office. I, I don't think it's clear the players are buying what Sala is selling. Sauce Gardner being out for no reason? I really don't know why you would pull Sauce Gardner off the field. I mean, that, that was a head scratcher. Gardner appeared to be extremely angry and reportedly walked into the locker room with his head down, you know, what the hell is your top cornerback doing spending nine plays on the sideline by himself? That's something the Jets would do. Bench its player for no, for no reason. The season which was entered with Super Bowl aspirations uh, was, was a major disappointment. It got off to a disappointing start. And that's the thing with the Jets, right? 
don't make promises that you that you can't keep. If you make a promise, you know you cannot keep. The word for that is a lie. And for years, the Jets have lied to their fan base. And as a rock, and, and, and as much as Rodgers can be a blessing, though, he can also be a curse if you believe in that kind of stuff. Fans, once again, like they do it. Every damn season will turn up aware of the stakes and, and, and ready for another season only to have their hearts broken into tiny little pieces over the same team that let them down the prior year. That's just how that's just usually how it goes. I mean, you've seen this every year where the Jets promise to produce a winning football team. They're not going to the playoffs. And like always, I, I know somehow. They will botch their season. The, the, look, the team that went out and traded for Aaron finally got a chance to see Aaron Rodgers take command of the offense. It was quite a disappointing performance from Brees Hall, who was supposed to have this breakout season. You talk about one fumble, a bad drop later in the game. I'm not ready to call the Jets Super Bowl contenders. They're supposed to contend for the Super Bowl. They saw what a what a team that has reached that level looks like, and they weren't ready for it. Hey, guys, I'm getting out of here now. Thanks for watching. It's, it's, it's been real as always. I love y'all. Thank you guys for the support. Thank you guys for the love. I really appreciate it. I got to get on with my day. But thanks for watching, everyone. Really appreciate it. And if you guys haven't, hit the subscribe button. If you guys like this channel, please do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button for me. We'll talk very soon. See you guys next time.